What's up everyone? Today we're gonna do a real quick update on the GS before we hop into today's super video. The 455 is back from the machine shop. It looks absolutely awesome. 30 overbore with uh, hydrotechnic pistons. The connecting rods have been hung. We have the, the camshaft bearings are pushed in. We have to still get ourselves a camshaft. I'm thinking about one of the, the high energy ones from Co or, uh, ComCam and um, we still need to get our crank turned, bearings ordered. We're gonna get those from TA Performance because they have ones that oil a little bit better. But uh, then we have to focus on other things like the heads and everything along those lines. I still wanna get a set of steel shim head gaskets instead of the ones that came in the Fell Pro uh, gasket kit that we have. But I, I really wanna keep that compression a bit on the higher side. So. Hopefully we'll be able to start doing some really great content with that engine. I know we're going to start comparing it with the 455, or sorry, the 454 and the 44. Well, we'll actually compare it against the 383 because I uh, I don't I kind of been looking over the 440 and I think it's good enough that all, other than replacing the crank with the steel crank so it's internally balanced and uh, a little bit stronger, I don't think we're going to be tearing that engine down because it, it's obviously a very low mileage engine. So, other than that, guys, it looks like. Uh, we should be getting some nice 455 content before you know it. Today, we want to make sure we get some real smiles per mile with this car. Now, we are we're putting this a V8 in this because everything needs a V8. But we want to make sure we have the ability of doing some pretty epic skids. Now, from the factory, these guys come. Well, this one, of course, is a higher, actually was the highest model for this particular car. Turbo, blah, 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 blah. Um, actually came with the automatic not the manual we converted the manual over a few years ago but the differentials in these are 373 gears and they put the the larger gear ratio or the in the 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 base model cars so the chances of finding an absolute base model supra is pretty slim but we just happen to have one very local being parted out and the differential was still in it now not only are they both limited slip, but this one here is a 430 gear. So this, and the cool thing is you can take the height of your tire, your your whatever drive gear you're running with, whether it's fourth, fifth, whatever, but final gear, you're one to one in this car. Um, and then you take your gear ratio and you can actually find out what you're gonna be at as far as mile per hour at a certain RPM. And this particular thing you're looking at around 57 58 miles per hour at i think i have it at 2700 rpm something along those lines um but the biggest concern was going to make this uh not really drivable on the highway but I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised with the situation we have and um cleaned up really nice it wasn't leaking the only thing was the uh the actual bolts were pretty gnarly so after getting them from Burlington, not Burlington, Bangington uh, Toyota, they uh, they were only like 25 bucks for all of them. I knocked the old ones out. I kept these in the freezer for a few days. Then I just put this big nut on here and then tightened it up. Oh, sorry, actually no. What you have to do first is you get to get it started. So you push them on, you tighten that on. Once that's on, it's still not enough. You gotta slide this guy on, then tighten this up, and then what you'll end up getting is it pulling it all the way through so as far as i can tell this is a great differential they're not known for failing the car was low mileage so she was a bit rusty but you know needle scaler like i showed you last time cleaned it right up um you gotta love those needle scalers it, it definitely produces a lot less dust and debris throughout the uh the whole garage and it's more just localized so let's go ahead it's pretty simple you have four bolts, two, two on the top, two on the bottom, and then two up in the front. So four on the back, two in the front. And then uh, before you take that, I recommend taking all these bolts off or nuts off. That way when you drop it down, you can slide it right off. And then we're gonna use the jack to safely drop it, scooter out of the way, put this one on, and then halfway up, you should put your axles back on it and then right all the way to the top. I really like these independent suspensions because they are great for autocross and I'm really looking forward to using this not only as a, a nice daily um, cruiser type car but I really I loved driving these things when I was younger as uh, autocross they're, they're really good at it 
they're still a little bit rear end happy and I'm sure this this car definitely will be even worse but it's going to be a good time so let's go ahead get them swapped out so one of the mods I did to this car a very long time ago was replace the original drive shaft with a all aluminum one it's a really good mod because and I'll show you later that the drive shaft really isn't that awesome I, I guess you could say it's it's very it's it's two piece the bearing in the center generally goes bad this was such a low mileage that that wasn't an issue but um yeah it's if you're, every time you have a connection inside the drivetrain it lose a little bit of power so highly recommend upgrade to an all aluminum drive shaft um for two reasons one weight they are a little bit bigger because of uh you know, it needs to be strong, but you'll save a little bit of weight going for the aluminum. You can get carbon fiber drive shafts, but they get real pricey. So aluminum is a great, great choice. The other reason is, um, well, you get rid of the two piece drive shaft. So if you have a vehicle with two piece drive shafts, just make it a one piece drive shaft. Just like that. Get that out of there too. This is just a rubber grommet that helped hold on the exhaust back in the day. I got fed up with trying to fight with it. And I just ended up cutting it off. Not a good idea because now you got to, you know, hunt them down and buy new ones. But that day it was... It was one of those days, you know, I'm sure it was. Also things like this back then was a little bit easier to get your hands on. All right. I need a 
set this down, smidgen. Unfortunately, these generally don't fight you too much, not least on this car. But if you're trying to get more smiles per mile, great, a great modification in any vehicle is to, to bump up this. But, mind you, if you do that, you do sacrifice some drivability. So, kind of keep that in mind. Sit down, do the math, determine if you want your car to be able to drive on the highway without being in like 4,000 RPM. You know, sometimes going to five in the fives or high fours might just be doing yourself a, dis, you know, doing yourself a not a favor. I guess that would be the way to put it. I don't know. And then you just spin the wheels and rinse and repeat the, I don't know, six on each side. It's super fun. Once you get these knocked out, there's a bolt right here, a bolt up inside here. You take those out, you kind of fight with this a little bit, get it slid to right where it is, use the, the stud to just hang it there. It will be mostly out of the way for you, you don't have to deal with it more. Uh, you can slide it out, getting it out of here, fuel tanks in the way, you can kind of, you know, there's a lot of ways you could get it out, but I find I'm just going to leave it like this. It stays out of the way, it's good enough. We're going to be putting it right back. Instead of taking it out and then you know, fighting to take it out and then fighting to put it back in, we just leave it where it is. Um, yeah, so we have a total of six bolts left. Once that comes out, we get to fight to separate the axles from the differential. Generally, it's not a big deal, but we'll see what happens here. Now we're going to use the, if it ain't going to break free, it's going to break bar. I tell you, I'm really digging working on these cars that aren't so rusted right now. It's, uh, it's a quite the, the nice little surprise. Now, I've not had a single one of these ever come out where the studs stayed in. So we're gonna have to go ahead and pop these apart so that it lines back up easier. I wish it, I don't know, 
I guess it's better to have the stud come out than break inside there. I don't know. But I haven't had one come loose properly yet. Watch, this one will. It'll make a liar out of me. Well, it wouldn't make a liar out of me, but you know what I mean. And the last ones. Which makes them something like a 20 or a 19 or 22 or something. Knuckle buster. I already tell you right now, this one's a knuckle buster. Nope. All right, you gotta use that. If it ain't broke, break it bar here. Let's see, that probably be, I don't know, that one. It's three-fourths equivalent. I'm going to send this thing home right to Jesus. You're also going to clean all these threads before you put this all back together. Because why would you drive yourself nuts trying to fight this? Sorry for hitting the camera there, guys. Limited space. This is definitely when you want to lift. Lift would be nice. probably already know zip it in and out a couple times well out and then in and then out and then in and then out and then in you know all that it's like that once you get that stuff on there though you zip it in once come right out cool stuff all right now she's still attached to the axles so she'll want to kind of let her go down controlled like we don't want to damage the boots or anything like that All right, let's stop it right there and see if we can't break her free. Right, just take a quick screwdriver, find a nice spot. There's a little bit of overlap pretty much on each side of this spot here and a little bit right here. We don't want to beat the heck out of it. We just want to give it a few love taps and break her free. Just like that. Shouldn't take much. Oh, 
bolts out of the way. Now that we got the old one out, we just scoop this one up, get her lined up like so, like so. Just darn it. Anyways, jack it up. Put these on. I'm gonna put these out of the way just for the time being. Hopefully, I won't forget to put them back on before. Jacking it back up into place. I'd rather not fight with that. I say right about there's a good spot. This one, is this one gonna fight me? Put it up a little bit further. Now I'm going to start getting into my own way. Slide these back into place. That one's fighting me. Scoop myself over there. There we go. That's not bad. Get a couple of these things started. Nope, not yet. See with the darn. Go with the smaller bolts. Alright. No, it's not the one I wanted. It's the one I wanted. Don't ugga dug them yet, just put them in place. You put these things in tight right off the bat, you're gonna hate yourself. get us pretty close to where we need to be there. Hose these things down a bit. I should be using the other stuff we got the other day. That stuff works really well. I need to put that in a spray bottle is what I need to do. That'll make my life a whole lot easier. That uh, stuff I had in the video where I was doing um, 
the brake lines. I can't remember the stuff. I'll, I gotta put put that in a bottle. That stuff is just rocks. That stuff is rock star material there, I'll tell you what. It's too bad I can't put my, my drill up here. My impact gun. Just zip them in, you know, not, don't, you know, full send with uh, it not lined up or anything, but this way she doesn't fall and give us all a heart attack. All right, come back to that in a minute. Get the one I put some stuff on, which was that one. down the next one put a little bit of I'll, I'll tell you what I learned today don't get any of that free all in your eyes it's not a good time not a good time all right Wrong size. Where did it go? Oh, it's on that. Right there, okay. So we just tighten these uh, six bolts up and we'll kind of catch back up in a second. Something I wanted to mention real quick. As you saw before I started putting bolts and I put a little bit of uh, lubricant on it, I used and um, just remember, if you're doing that, your torque specification is going to be different. If you go to the torque specifications that it's supposed to be there with lubricant and it doesn't call for lubricant, um, you you do run the risk of over torquing it and breaking it. So just keep that in mind. I, I don't know the exact percentage. I am going good and tight on these, and uh, right to the point where it sounds like it's going to start screaming at me. I'm gonna. You know, I'm going to stop because too tight, two pieces. Um, other than that, you'll go from not being able to barely budge it to mock Jesus in um, a half a millisecond. And uh, that's when you not only break the bolt, but probably one of your digits or something like that. So remember, uh, right now I'm just doing good and tight. But uh, if you were in the same situation as, say, I don't know, torquing something down with torque specifications and you go for it and you put lubricant on it, there's a good chance that it will be too tight, two pieces. So, food for thought. Remember, I'm going for it and tight. Even though this is a, not a German car, we're going to go with German torque specifications. Well, guys, I would say today was a great success. Not only did we get the old diff out, which is crusty, but we upped the gearing from the 373 to the 430. This thing is nice in there. Look at that. Nice and shiny. All the bolts are tight. Brackets are tight. We do need to go ahead and drain the fluid out and put new stuff in, but I figure we'll do that in the vehicle so it's we get the right levels and everything. Now, the next big thing, of course, Engine and transmission has to go in and get that wonderful uh, drive shaft back in here. And if we uh, take a second, we can take a look at it. So you can see, that's the original one. This was a low mileage car, so the bearing in here is in actually it's really good shape. So, but the more connection points you have, the less efficient the system is. Also, those bearings do have a tendency of going bad. They make horrible noises. And uh, no bueno. Now there is. A little thing that sits underneath there, a little bracket in case you know our flange mount here fails, it falls on the ground and doesn't 
pole vault your vehicle into uh, space with Elon Musk, you can see the aftermarket drive shaft, all aluminum. Not only is it a lot lighter, but with less points in between start to finish, a lot more efficient system. So not only is it lighter, it's more efficient, be able to get more power to the, the tarmac quicker. Um, yeah, I know a lot of you guys are probably more into the domestic vehicles and I, I, me too. I love, I love muscle cars. Um, it's about the only import vehicle I really enjoy that and maybe, uh, early second gen MR2, but, um, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun guys. You know, of course it's getting a V8 because everything needs a V8. Everything needs a V8. Uh, we are about halfway to being able to order all the parts. I should be able to do that by the end of the week. That's why we have that right there to get us across the finish line. Um, most of that is just going to be, it's mostly going to get parted out. The engine's no good. I got it for next to nothing. Um, it's only 4.7 liter. If it was something a little bit better than that, we would do something with it. Unfortunately, it's in really good shape. It's in not really good shape. It's in fairly good shape. Uh, only has 120,000 miles on it. So like I said, we'll be able to get ourselves across the finish line and order those parts hopefully by the end of the weekend or week. Yeah, that one. So we'll be able to, I'm hoping we'll be able to get this thing to do uh, some burnouts before the snow flies. Once we're done working on the, G, the, the Supra, we'll be back on the GS. I just, I really like your guys' feedback and I, I got tons of feedback that you guys wanted to see less rust um, all the time. I mean, you guys still like the rust and stuff like that, but you wanted something that would be a quicker project and something that would be a lot of fun. And seeing how I had this one kicking around, I figured it would be fantastic for that. So if you guys, as always, if you have any um, suggestions or feedback, always have the comment section down below. I always appreciate hearing from you guys and uh, I can only make the channel better with your guys' input. So if you ever have anything you want to say, make sure you let me know. Until the next time, remember, I agree with uh, all you guys. Sometimes it's nice to get a, a break from the rust and um, be able to work on something that's a lot more solid and something that needs a little less attention uh, to bring her back from the, the, the great beyond, if you will. So I hope you guys are enjoying this one. I know I am. I know I'm really excited to be able to take this thing out uh, for the first time in... Well, I mean, I did drive it here from my mom's house. I stored it there while I was um, with my previous job. I did a lot of traveling, so I stored it there. But I've owned this car for tw almost 12 years now, and uh, most of it was spent in storage. So I'm really excited about taking it out, and I'm really excited about having the 1UZ because I, not to knock out the 7M engine, but um, not the most reliable engine. No matter what you do, sometimes you... Uh, you just got to walk away from an engine and put something better in. So, and V8s are better than straight sixes. Anyways, you guys have yourselves a beautiful night. Remember, comment section down below if you uh, have any suggestions, comments. Um, love hearing from you guys. If you like the content, you want to help support it, we have the t-shirts. Uh, if you like this car, we have the Don't Fear the Reaper. Or Fear the Reaper. Fear the Reaper. We have the general shirt for the, the GS and we have for 100 once we sell 100 of them, the, the satellite t-shirt is going to go away as well. So if you guys have any other questions or anything, always put in the comment section. And until next time, remember, keep your shiny side up and God bless.